Um, yeah, so this is the paper that has just been presented at uh, SIGMOT 2022 in the <coughs> industry session about graph pattern matching in GQL and SQL to GQ. So since it was presented in SIGMOT, uh, obviously I had to give, I had to give a introductory slide uh, telling what proxy graphs are. I imagine here everybody knows them, but I'll still go through the beautiful animation done by my courser. I could never do anything like that. So, you know, so we have um, graphs with both nodes in relation. We can have labels and properties. So here's a node, it's an account and has an owner and uh, whether it is blocked um, attributes, properties likewise, so edges. So here's a transfer edge. So it's similar that has uh, properties and labels or types. And here we have a whole graph that's, well, that's gonna be used as a, as a running example. So a bunch of people doing transfers between their accounts and uh, about some of them we know where they're located. Okay, as we know, there are multiple vendors in industry, quite several of them represented here and some probably on Zoom as well. And definitely even more uh, at WG3 happening in, uh, uh, happening in Berlin. Uh, where some of us would have been had Berlin not been scheduled at the same time as Sigmund. So uh, it's uh, quite widespread. Uh, there are various predictions how much graphs will be used in uh, data analytics and what their growth will be. Um, so as for querying, so again, like the situation here, everybody knows. So there are multiple declarative languages that have been proposed uh, in industry, Cypher, GPL, GSQL. So this industry academic consortium had very interesting proposal of GCore. Um, and uh, so, but they all really look like dialects of the same language. So, so the main ideas were the same. So that led nature proposal back in, uh, in proposal was in 2018. So uh, as Keith had approved in 2019 development of GQL. So of course, another is we just got heard from his standardization is SQL PGQ. So it's just graph defined as views over relational schema. And that has been developed in a couple of years early and therefore it's gonna finish early. But the crucial thing is that this the share just, you know, again, like what Keith mentioned. So the share of the pattern matching language. And so it's gonna be the same for interoperability between the two. And this is what we are gonna talk about. So a little bit how this works. So as again, thanks Keith, to introducing all the abbreviations. So this is the SQL committee, the, the WWG3. So the picture taken at the last meeting, which was the first physical meeting uh, after the pandemic, at which about how the participants are called got COVID. Uh, and uh, so the liaison with LDBC. And uh, LDBC has working groups, again, they also mentioned by Keith. And the formal semantic working group in particular, so it looked, uh, it worked quite heavily with the, with the standard committee, analyzing decisions related to pattern matching and providing feedback and leading to uh, a number of change proposals. And so this uh, so it was essentially back and forth between, between the two. And uh, so this structure explains the list of authors, which is such that it requires a small proxy graph uh, itself to be uh, to display. And so, and I get to present this as the node with the largest out degree, mm -hmm. and uh, and, prob and probably and the most complicated affiliation as well that requires different fonts to express it. Okay, so uh, the um, the pattern matching feature itself. Okay, as you would expect, there should be uh, we should be able to select nodes, and we should be able to select nodes and filter them based on some conditions, conditions based on properties. So you have the where clause. Uh, and where of course you put conditions similar to what you, put, what you put in SQL. All right, so here we're selecting all the node blocked accounts. So that came out in red. You can just select all nodes, right? If you don't put any conditions. Uh, you can combine nodes and edges. So, and so here you have, uh, so here I look at all the transfers from an unblocked account to a blocked account with uh, amount at most. 5 million. So here's an example of a match for this. So this kind of, this should be like very, very familiar if you've done Cypher, GKL, uh, GSQL, right? This is, this is absolutely standard. So uh, there are multiple edge options. So you can go left, right, uh, undirected, uh, you can disregard direction. So uh, then if you combine the pass using, uh, using ASCII art, say again, like the idea that should be very, very familiar to uh, people in this audience, 
So here we look at two different transactions, two different transfers into an account um, uh, in the blocked account. So what else we do? So we can have uh, past reversals, right? So we say, okay, give me the transfers between an, uh, from an uh, unblocked account to a blocked account of length between two and five, right? So we kind of start getting some sort of fraud detection, uh, fraud detection queries. And uh, so here we can repeat an edge. So again, like so far, uh, this is, uh, should, should be familiar to people who, have, who, know, who, know, who know Cypher, like here's an example. Uh, so allowed quantifiers that we can that we can use are we can, uh, repetitions or they could be a uh, number of uh, so so repeat, repeat between m and n times or it could be a clean star it could be clean plus so zero or more or one one or more and we can also put conditions in the edges so we can uh, let's say okay let's let let's go uh, by traverse so let's look at the chain of uh, transfers between an unblocked account to blocked account of length between two and five so every transfer is of significant amount say bigger than seven million so we can just put that in the edge specification uh, and it's not just a single edge that can be repeated so this uh, the, the, the figure up there doesn't correspond to the uh, to, 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 to the query because I just put in here since we were, when we were presenting um, when we're presenting uh, the, the poster at the Sigma session. So this came up several times. And so I just added the slide as a query. So you can repeat, you can repeat an arbitrary pattern, right? So here we just say, okay, let's, uh, it doesn't make that much sense, but just to illustrate the feature. So uh, then you look at the past. So that starts with an edge with amount that bigger than 7 million followed by amount bigger than 3 million. And that double pass we repeat between two and five times. So the key point here is that uh, whatever is in, in, in those brackets, so, so which is a pattern, which is not just a single edge, right? So they allow to put the repetition with this quantifiers on, on the pattern. Now, uh, the usual problem, uh, if you have cycles, we are gonna have an infinite number of paths and the language allows you to output paths. So we can say, okay, let's, uh, let's bind uh, paths that go by the transfers that go from uh, an account owned by Mike to an account owned by Jay. And let's look at arbitrary lengths of those arbitrary transfer chain, transfer chains between those accounts and output such paths. Now, because there's a cycle here, right? So if you can just go from Mike, you can go to Jay this way, but you can keep cycling through this graph in various ways, right? So the number of paths is gonna be infinite. So we have to restrict them somehow. And there are two ways of doing that in GTML. So they're, they're called restrictors and selectors. So restrictors restrict the set of consider paths to ensure that's finite, and select once we've done things. So they filter out uh, the filter out results to assure finiteness. So what are the restrictors? So uh, the uh, the restrictors are simple and trail. So the simple means it's a simple pass. So here are two examples. So simple pass means that um, things don't repeat. So there's like a little bit more. So there's so 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 so, so, so that, that that nodes don't repeat, except maybe the first and the last, right? So they allow simple cycles, and uh, so in this case there are two matched paths. So the trail, which you will slowly show up here now. So uh, so the trail means is it's like in cipher, it's no repeated edges, right? So notice that here we went through it so twice, but no edge has ever been traversed twice. So that similarly ensures finiteness. Uh, and so what else? Also, there was a cyclic, which is just like, but even the first and the last node uh, are not allowed to repeat. Um, so what are the selectors? So selectors are short paths, right? So here we have uh, here we have a selector. So it finds the shortest path between Mike and Jay, which is just one node, and uh, we can output either all shortest or uh, or any short, uh, or any shortest, in, uh, and uh, this also can be combined with restrictors, but in a syntactically, so in, in a way that I syntactically arbitrary combinations. So yeah, so you know, arbitrary combinations could lead to problems. That was in fact one of the things that we had long back and forth between the formal semantics working group and WG3. And so finally, finally, there were syntactic restrictions on how those two can, can be combined. So essentially, the selectors could only appear at the top of the pattern. So as you would expect from any Python language, there's union and there's optional. So union could be set based or multi-set based. So we can have like similar SQL union and union all. 
You can also have optional, uh, so it's question marks, or so let's say, look at into a blocked account, and uh, uh, and then uh, an optional if there are transfer out of the blocked account, I'll put that as well. So and finally, we combine all the things together using joins. So here is an example. So we're looking at some there are some fraud scenario. So let's look for uh, transfer into a blocked account. So let's see who is laundering money. Somebody who is transferred from blocked account, such as that blocked account, then by chain of transfers, transfers back to X and allocated to the same city. Right? Something along these lines. And uh, that's essentially how it works. So we just look at, we initially find the transfer into blocked account. Then we find a pass that goes back. And so then we ensure they're in the same city. Right. So this, this is join has been computed so far. So what about the output of uh, this pattern language? So the output is fairly complicated data structure. And essentially, it combines paths and graphs with bindings of variables. And as such structure, so then the question is how you interpret the output. So essentially it can be embedded in the both jQL and PGQ. When it's embedded in PGQ, so it falls back into uh, falls back into relational, right? So it has to be interpreted as a table, right? And you just output particular columns that uh, fr from the match. Um, in jQL, there there are possible interpretations. You can interpret it as a table. You can interpret it as a view of a graph. You can interpret it as as a new graph that you build. And so this this complicated structure that comes out of pattern matching gives you various options. So the timeline to the standard. So this is what we said when we were writing the Sigma paper. Uh, it has been since, since in the Sigma talk, I said these dates are always guaranteed to slip. And then Keith just confirmed that. So don't look at this slide. Look at what Keith told you. And uh, some research challenges, some things that we sort of we I think we need to be doing, and in fact we are doing. I mean, one is the first. The first item is. Um, so we are, with jQL development, we are in a somewhat unusual situation because we're developing, uh, like if you look at how SQL was developed, right? I mean, there was this nice work, right? We, we had relational calculus, we had relational algebra, we had this clean set-based model, right? It's a relational language. And then, then you know, SQL came from trying to put that in programming syntax. And then of course, all the bells and whistles, you know, maximize its aggregation nouns, all of this stuff was added. And, uh, and here we're doing jQL. But there is no relational calculus, there is no relational algebra, right? There's nothing, you know, what, what is the core of that, right? So we have this pattern matching, but what's the relational calculus of this pattern matching? So we kind of have to, now what we are working on is uh, essentially telling the history as it should have been, right? So, and, uh, you know, produce this core relational calculus underlying the, the pattern matching, which would get rid of all these extra elements that we'll look at later and add on top, like, you know, till the, you know, set base, no aggregation, no nulls, you know, just very clean, very simple. But it will really tell you what the essence is. And seeing that the essence of that, so we we just kind of we kind of worked out this this version, and we're very happy with that. And uh, but the, the the point is that this is very different from what the research community has been studying. The research community has been concentrated for years on RPQs and CRPQs, and even extending things with data a little bit, but not that much. And uh, you know we need a proper language to study. So now at least you know we can give uh, we can give people a tool and say you know study that. Don't don't write more papers on CRPQs, right? They write more papers on this stuff. So the second thing is you know there is support for aggregation. So you can uh, you can say okay let's fly between uh, you know two cities. So we we have only fictional cities by the way because our examples about money laundering and when we're writing the Sigma paper. We initially saw it on, you know, it was all the usual countries like Cayman Islands, Panama, and then we saw that it's gonna offend people. And so then we made it all about the US, and then those Pandora papers came out and it turned out that the US is like number three on the list of money laundering countries. So, and we had to change the names to something fictional because we didn't wanna offend Americans. And uh, yeah, it's something I didn't expect to happen. So then, you know, we, we, we only do fictional cities here. and. Uh, you can see that um, Jim Martins is a big fan of uh, Pratchett and I'm a big fan of Nabokov. And so that is reflected in cities used in examples. So yeah, but we can go between two cities and what we can do is we go along in the past, we can sum up lengths, we can sum up like value of the lengths of, of, the, of the duration attribute and say, okay, give me, is there like a sequence 
Is there a way to go between these two cities so that the total duration of the flight is less than 24 hours? Right? So that looks fairly innocuous. The problem is that in SQL, they are very used to the, to have, to the having clause that gives you re restrictions on values of aggregate. Now, if you do the same thing here, we are in big trouble because we can suddenly code undecidable problems. And uh, so at this point, the decision is drastic. It's just, you know, there is no, no conditions in aggregate, so aggregates can only be output. But it's useful stuff, right? So the question is, you know, how much we can do without sort of getting this, uh, uh, this, this horrendous issues with expressiveness. And also how we do, how we optimize this. I mean, vendors are already working on this, obviously, because they're going to be implementing this stuff. But the, 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 the background uh, optimization techniques that you would expect to come from the research community uh, are, are still lacking. So this is, to me, this is kind of three research challenges that I, I mean, I personally would very much want to look at. And there was another one that actually was mentioned in very much discussed talk by Vim yesterday, which is how we output parts, right? So, and I'll stop at that. Um, for the first topic, you mentioned that you already have some sense of what this underlying uh, calculus would be for GTML. Could you kind of briefly sketch, uh, or is it too early to, to say? Uh, I mean, we just we just go ahead. So what we've done, we just went and said, okay, this is the features, right? Let's observe these features, what it, what it really means, right? And um, uh, and you know, there are several iterations, but we now understand, you, you know, essentially you can say, okay. We'll have node patterns, you have edge patterns, right? You have conditions, then in conditions, then you sort of build things by usual constructions, like, you know, uh, essentially regular expression construction, then you have queries and on top of queries, you can do restrictor selectors. But then you have to do a little bit more than relational calculus because there is even here, there's gonna be a primitive typing system because you're not gonna be comparing node with an edge or there are group variables, right? You're not gonna be comparing group variables with a singleton variable in, in case you go over past. And then the main problem there is how you give the semantics of this, right? And it's actually, it's, it's kind of looks, everything, everything is completely trivial until we get to the repetition and then it becomes non-trivial, right? And, uh, but you don't want to give a non-trivial semantics, right? Because if you give non-trivial semantics, you can say, well, you know, if you have to like read three pages of semantics to understand what you're doing, that's not right. And uh, so in fact, most of our work was actually to distill everything to something that can properly be analyzed and give you you see, you, you know, people say, okay, well, SQL is based on first order logic, right? Yeah, kind of, right? But uh, sometimes it's, it's different. Of course, it's different. But nonetheless, uh, research on first order logic and the relational logic, relational calculus gives you a lot of insight into what's going on, right? So here we just want to give a tool and essentially formulation that so that you can do research on that and it will give you insight into what's going on. And one thing is that, you know, already like complexity of even this simple calculus turns out be highly non-trivial, right? So in fact, I can tell like maybe a bunch of theoreticians, you know, some people who are very well used to proving those lower bounds, we don't have the lower bounds anymore, right? And it's not like for the lack of thinking, right? I mean, we just could not figure out what it was because there's there's more going on than in the relational problem. Can you maybe skip a few slides back where you talked about uh, patterns and you'd seen clean star on patterns? Yes. This edit this one? one, yes. Yeah. So is this this is in the standard on in PGQ or okay? Mm -hmm. So and but because uh, previously being the, the talked about also you know, uh, pattern expressions where you would define like an out of line this in line in in the match expression you define a pattern and you do a star on it. But this is uh, okay. I didn't know that this was. Is this added new recently or? No, this is not recent. I mean, okay. It's, uh, okay, so you can I mean, nest them. Been, yeah, this we've been, we've been looking at that in the formal semester. We've been looking at that for close to two years now. So maybe year but and and there is no way of uh, actually naming uh, a pattern. You can name you can name a pass. Yes, a pass. Yes, you can name a pass. So you're talking about pattern macros. Right. Yeah, pattern yeah, yeah. macros. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that got dropped. Oh, okay. No, macros, are, but 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 you can name a pass and return a pass variable, right? So it's not only the outermost pass that you can return. Yeah, but you can't, you can't have a lexical code unit that you can then incorporate by no, reference. No, 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 that, that you cannot. That, right. If that you're talking about pass macros, uh, 
I think they will postpone until jiggle version. Okay. I don't know. But this is the same <laughs> expressive power. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same expressive power because you can do it in line. And macros, you can, yes, you. This, apparently. You can yeah. just put it in yes. line. Yeah, but you, you know, you, every time you put it, you, you, you just have to, you have to repeat it. Yeah. So my question is about the, aggreg the aggregates. Um, was, here you were talking about aggregate conditions, uh, and you didn't mention the what to return. And that maybe it's a stupid question because I don't know the discussion in the standard. But like, uh, what? Why I never see in graph language anything like group by? And uh, my understanding is that it's implicit. It is implicit, yes. right? But what's the rationale of keeping it implicit? Is there anything sophisticated there, or just you, you don't need it. Well, first of all, I mean, once you actually, if you look at if, if, if you look at the relational output, you can make it implicit, right? So why or is, uh, you can make it explicit? Right? Uh, why is it implicit? And can we really implicit in Cipher? And uh, I, because it, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, Cipher it's, decided to. to yeah. it, it was one of these things that annoys developers. And people like not having to do it, and it was like, yeah, let's let's give it to people. Yeah, it's and a hard constructing SQL to understand for the undergrads. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's great, it creates a variation. I think in GQL it's it's optional, right? You can actually have explicit. Go uh, in, you know, in PGQ and GQL, you can actually do that. You can do this explicitly, kind of as well. I guess it doesn't yeah. arise in in. Um, in PGQ because it's a part of SQL. But yeah, exactly. It does, so, it so, does so, arise in GQL. So in PGQ, but not 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 in, not in the pattern matching because pattern matching is the same. So it, it doesn't impact expressivity. No, it, no, it does not impact expressivity. Right? It's just a question of uh, I, I I don't know actually. I I wasn't there, so I don't know the reason why Cypher did it that way. But <clears> my <throat> guess is just to keep the syntax cleaner. Yeah, yeah. It's prob probably that was the only reason because we should ask Petra when she gets her talk because she's going to talk about. 